welcome to MBS Show, episode number 247. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Greetings, Norman. Hello, how are you doing? I am doing just fine. In fact, I've heard many good things. And one of them is? Why, the fact that we have another show today with plenty of news. Yay, news. A lot's happening. The other good thing is, apparently, America has now sworn in its next president. And... Yeah. That's good? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I heard news about that, so yeah, um, I, I hope things go well. Um, now is the time where he's on the spotlight and everybody's eyes are on him now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But enough of depressing real life politics. Let's talk about happy pony stuff that's much cooler and much more fantastical and at least doesn't have the quagmire of real life. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of fantasy, uh, what's better than fantasy RPGs? Well, I'm going to cross the pond for a bit for this one. And you know the My Little Pony Tales of Equestria tabletop RPG? Oh, that's the thing I was trying to segue us into. Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. I seems that our brethren across the pond, which is in the UK, are, well, they have a pre-order for it now. So if you guys are in the UK... You can pre-order it at a shop called Shop for Worlds. So yeah, it's there. Um, the board game itself costs you about twenty-five pounds, which I converted to dollars is thirty-two dollars and ten cents. Probably thirty-three dollars for you guys when it comes out, not including taxes and whatnot. So probably mark it up to thirty-five. And you have the what you call this, the Crusaders of the. Statue, I think that's the first expansion and some other accessories, which is $22.94 uh, and £10. So yeah, it's all there. It's up for pre-order. If you're interested in playing this game and if you're in the UK, it's all there. And what will you be getting in all this thing? Well, I see that you're going to be getting, uh looks like a backboard to begin with, which has actually got a very nice map of Equestria on it with the six main six on it. You also get a set of uh, six dice, what looks like to be a D9, a D6, a D8, and a D20, and uh, two diamond-shaped D8s. And, well, you get the token. <laughs> oh, God. Token of friendship. You know what? This, this is one of those situations where guys slapping a branding name on a piece of plastic doesn't really make it a token of friendship. Though, to be honest, I'm getting uh, purple crystals. Tokens of friendship. I'm getting uh, the Sweetie Chronicles uh, flashes here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I read that one. I wish it updates, but... Yeah. Oh, well, I guess one of these things will Twilight Sparkles get zapped into my head. Oh, oh God, no. Oh, the fragments. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but no, um, it's interesting. And also, if you check out, well, what I mentioned before, dice, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's something else. But there's dices where if you have a selected class, which is Pegasus, Earth Pony, or Unicorn, you got selected die for your set in a nice tin box with some sponges to keep it in, which is really cool and nice. Um, I'm assuming there's a box of six die inside. 1d4, 1d4... 1d8, 1d10, 1d12, 1d20. I'm thinking that's a 1d8, 1d6. Yeah, we don't have a 1d6 there. So that could be a 1d6. But individual dice for individual races, meaning they'll have specific uh, dice you'll have to roll for certain things. That's actually going to be kind of interesting. And then we got the pony sheet pads, which I guarantee you people are just going to go to a photocopier and just immediately copy off as many as possible. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you have that once, and then like everything else is just going to be copied. Yeah. And it seems like you know they uh, they can you know, actually come pre. So some have pre rendered drawings on them, so you can just fill in the blanks. You know those who can't draw, and but they have plenty of blank image sheets, so you you know all the artists in there can just go absolutely nuts. Yeah, and you know what? What something cool? Like if you're going to BronyCon and you go meet some of your favorite artists, uh, plugging Matt Munchkin here. If you go see her, like, oh my god, Matt Munchkin, draw my outside. You can hand her the sheet and she can draw in the squares. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, some commission artists would love to actually do that as a sort of you know sketch thing or something. Heck, we yeah, could definitely, definitely pitch it to them or whatnot. 
And then finally, the the most expected item, heck, um, even if you're not into RPGs, this would be great for any fan, is the bestiary of Equestria. Uh, it contains all the information about uh, for the GM and players alike. Basically, the lore of Equestria. And for fanfic writers, this is a treasure trove. I want to get this. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wills, for people who do not know what a bestiary is, mind explaining to them what it is? A bestiary is a book that basically describes all the creatures and plants and animals that can be found within the lore of an area. Like, you'll find out what kind of monsters are, what they do, what they like to do, what they like to eat, usually ponies, how to run, what to do when you encounter them, usually run away fast, you know. So it'll be great for anyone who wants to know lore, more lore about the place and uh, mm-hmm. anyone who just wants to have fun with their fic writing. It could be a chance for your headcanons to be confirmed or utterly destroyed. Yeah, but in all honesty, I would recommend this book for fic writers because it's something to add into the, well, it's a reference guide for creatures you want to put in to your stories. Or if you're interested in um, knowing more about the creatures of Equestria, this is a perfect book. Like, if you have some free time, you can just read up on them. And do note that this may or may not be canon from the show. It could be tier 2 canon, probably, but still, it's a very interesting read. Hopefully anything better than the comics came up with. Oh uh, yeah, true, true. But still, the comics were pretty limited with what they had. And yeah, I- I'm seeing the same thing here too. But in all honesty, The Bestiary is a really cool book. And yeah, this is what you'll be getting if you are interested in buying the set. So yeah, um, if you're interested in, well, trying to play this game, um, I say try and find someone who owns this game and try to learn it from there. Or Tabletop Simulator, probably somebody modded it there and you can try play it there just to learn. And in all honesty, this kind of games is best played in person where you get to see the faces, you get to see the reactions and whatnot. Those what makes tabletop RPGs really, really fun. But anywho, uh, with that, let's go on to the next news. Um, next news, uh, wow, I, I, I don't have a segue for this, but you remember those writers, Kevin Burke and Chris Doc uh, Wyatt, they are responsible for writing uh, The Times They Are Changeling, Viva Las Pegasus, and Pony Point of View. They be, well, not returning for season 7. Mm, just a couple of guest writers then. They did a pretty good job though. Yeah, I mean, like, The Times They Are Changeling, it was a pretty entertaining episode. Like, we had our problems with it, but it's not that huge of a problem. Viva Las Pegasus was fun, and I like how they portrayed Flame and Flam. And Pony Point of View was a strange one. But still, I enjoyed it. By far, Viva Las Pegasus was probably their strongest one, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, followed by the Pony Point of View, and then Times Are Changeling. The only reason I give Times Are Changeling low is because everything solved with a song. Yeah, but ain't that my little pony? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I'll go. I'll, I'll forgive all the post-traumatic stress disorder and horrible mistrust I now have of my wife and everyone else around me because of what that changeling queen did to me. But I'll give you a chance. <laughs> Yay! But still, my little pony friendship is blocking blocking out horrible memories. Yay! Ah, oh, but still, they are excited for the season because. They're not writing it for it, but they are waiting for it just like us fans. So yay, that's going to be cool. Yeah. And well, talking about something cool is the Elements of Harmony book. You remember that one, right? Yeah, I remember it. I actually have it right here. Ah, cool. Well, yeah. it's getting a sequel. Hmm. So what's going to, I mean, the first book in uh, encountered seasons one, two, and three. So is um is the next book going to do four, five, and six? Well, from what I see here on EQD, everything you need to know about the hit TV show, My Little Pony Franchise Magic, character bios, episode guide, maps, are uh, just the beginning. The second volume of the White Leap, wow, this is long, um, features season 4 through 6, 
highlights of which include Princess Twilight, The Castle of Friendship, The Defeat of Lord Tyrek, The Equestria Games, The Appearance of Starlight Glimmer, The Birth of Prince Wob. It covers a lot. I'm not 100% sure what is it going to cover because if I do remember right, that book or the first one was pretty packed. It was pretty good. Hmm. I like the book. I like the artwork that's in it. I still go back to it every now and then just to, you know, get a point of reference or just, you know, get a little bit of inspiration. It's going to be interesting to see what they do for this one. Like, uh, like, just are they going to do the exact same formatting? Are they going to spice it up a little? Who knows? I don't mind if they do the same formatting. Like, I do like what they did before with having some of the writers write their thoughts in it too. That was quite cool. And this is one of those things where, hmm, we as fans of this show are spoiled because no other series do stuff like this. Yeah, I really can't think of another thing that's currently merchandising itself like this. So yeah, that is pretty unique. And yeah, <laughs> like books, yeah, there's a lot of books. Backstories to things like this, yeah, I mean, there's the art book and whatnot. Yeah, it's all there, but having it consistently for a TV show, eh, I don't know if any other series does this. But that's the news for this week. Yeah, We have a short news week for this week, and so, well, we're just going to see what we can do. I mean, there's nothing much to do besides, well, talk about what we've been doing or what have we been watching. And remember that one thing you wanted to try and, well, carry on, Wills, with uh, talking about things we've seen? Mm-hmm. Yep, we, we, we missed that last week. Oh, well, so much for consistency. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> that's us, in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, um, you have any? If not, I can go first. Ah, no, go right ahead, man. You start. Alrighty then. So, with what I've been watching on a regular basis is Unit Loss, Great British Gaming. This guy, he focuses on Overwatch videos now. Some of the videos he do are pretty, well, entertaining. He does news and guides to Overwatch and how to play it and how to, well, get good. And the way he does it is pretty entertaining. So, yeah, Unit Loss, Great British Gaming on the YouTubes. It's a really fun watch if you're into gaming, like Overwatch. That's me. And what about you, Wills? Anything that catches a fancy? Well, I actually went back, and since the announcement of uh, Last of Us Part 2 was announced, mm-hmm. um, I actually went to store and uh, I got the remastered version for the PS4 and uh, got it for only 15 bucks. It's uh, been replaying that. It's fun going back through it and just realizing all the atmosphere they put into the game. And even though it was a retouch and retexture up to uh, the PS4, um, uh, Naughty Dog really put a lot of detail into their world, and it's actually kind of fun to explore that. The Last of Us, from what I remember, was a pretty fun game. I I had a lot of real fun with that game. Like, how do I put this? Usually when you play a game, they give you multiple ways to play it. And yeah, you can go... For example, Uncharted. You can go the run and gun way or you can do the ninja way. And usually the ninja has a lot of rewards, but you can just finish the game with just running and gunning. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I think uh, Uncharted 4 had probably the best combat, and I hope they bring some four Uncharted 4 over to Last of Us 2. Mainly, I think they really improved the stealth part of the game, and they mm. also improved, improved the gunplay. It felt more flowing, more natural. And um, that is one complaint I do have about the uh, the Last of Us is that there is uh, the stealth is sort of a little wonky, and um, everyone seems to know where you are at all times once <laughs> they do find you. Uh, but still, it's still fun. Oh yeah, but one thing I do, I do have to praise Last of Us was let's say I have a pistol and I shoot a bullet and then I uh, do that click 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 click, you know, like I try shooting again. The other enemies will say, "Ha ha, I know that sound," and they'll come <laughs> charging at me. And when they do, though. I then just pull out my shotgun and blast them in the face. And then, oh gosh, this game's actually highly detailed. That is, I never saw it like that before. Uh, well, that's a PS4 for you. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, yeah. turning my stomach. Yep, but still, but still, it's yeah, it's a fun game. The Last of Us is a really fun game. I have it, but I still haven't played the remastered version yet. Oh well, need more time. And ugh, I, I really need more time. Ah well. 
well, that's the thing we've been doing this weekend. Oh, well, this week, uh, you've been playing games, I've been watching Unit Lost Gaming, and also The Best Friends, can't stop watching them. And, well, that's the show for this week, unless, Will, you got anything else to add? No, not much else. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. As for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. And what about you, Wills? Uh, people want to find me. You can find me as W-I-L-I-Z-I-N, both on DeviantArt, on Twitter, and on Tumblr, and on Vim Fiction. Awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. And also, we have a Patreon page. Yes, uh, the Patreon page we just started a while back. It's almost coming to its first month. And yeah, what to expect with this one? Well, a dollar will get you a thanks. And your name will read out on the show because we like you. And if you have any ideas or topics or just to talk, like you want us to grow longer, um, five bucks would do that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if you, if you want us to talk about more Overwatch, we can do that. We do love the Overwatch. Oh, Last of Us. Yeah, I, re- I remember playing a bit of it. Uh, I hate those stickers. <laughs> well, all I know for one thing is that I played my first playthrough on a drunk, so I barely remember half of it. <laughs> oh, wow. You, you, then you need to replay it again, because it is a good game to play and play. But anywho, yeah, we have the Patreons. It's at patreon.com slash the MBS show. All links will be in the show notes. And also, please do, well, check out our newest adventure, the MBS show reviews and discussion podcast, where me, Silver, Sapphire, and sometime Will come on board to talk about, well, pony episodes, pony movies, pony comics, and also, well, some random things like movies that we watch. And also some other things like, uh, let's see, video games. Yes, we do like video games, so we talked about that one too. So yeah, do check us out there. And well, like that five bucks also goes to that pot too. If you have any topics you want us to talk about, yeah, try and drop it there and we'll talk about it there. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. See ya later.